So guys, before we get started, don't forget we do have that amazing discount code, thanks to Tier Zero Games, going on right now. And all you have to do is put in Z W Games five to get five percent discount on your total order at tierzerogames.com. The links will be in the description below. What's up, YouTube? This is Joe from Z4 Games, and as you can see, I'm bringing to you guys my complete DDD deck profile for you guys. This is post dual overload and post post MR5. We're so close to MR5, like literally everything that I'm building is just now mentally for that format. So before I even get to the profile, please smash that like button, give us a subscribe as well, and give us a comment down below what you think of this profile. All of that helps us a lot and helps the channel a lot. It helps us give you guys the profiles that you want and the profiles that we want to give to you as well. So please do all that for us. It would be greatly appreciated. And I, to all the people that do that already, we greatly thank you for it. So this is, as I said, post MR5, post all overload, everything that comes out with that is in this video. So I'm really enjoying this deck right now. Like it feels like back to when it first began. This deck is just so, so good. So, so, so consistent. I haven't had, I think this has been its most consistent. It's very, very bizarre. <laughs> like DD has been put through so much pain so much torment and I feel like it's just now come out and it's most consistent and it's strongest yet. Like it is really, really powerful. The plays that it can do, the locks that it can get, um, set up, like really every hand at least gives you something. It's just absolutely insane. I love it so much and I want to share it with you guys today. So starting off with the free Ragnarok. I am working on some lighting going on at the moment, so I hope that the quality of at least the images, um, so you can see what they are, um, is better for you guys. But I am working on finding a cam a new camera to record my videos on, so I can give you much better quality content. So. Free Ragnarok, you've got to have free Ragnarok. Free Copernicus, you've got to have free Copernicus. And free Kepler as well. These are the three of Pendrums that you play. You don't play any less. Copernicus, you could probably drop down to two if it fits your comfortability and your play style. But I personally like to have free Copernicus. It just helps you with so much of the combos um, that you can do. It just helps you boost up your consistency with your graveyard as well. Um, and having those low scales can actually benefit you as well. Um, if you need to pendulum summon certain times and uh, you do actually can do that you do do that quite a bit sometimes so Moving on to three of non-pendulums obviously your free spell signs I personally think free necro sign is very very important just because you want to see this in your opening hand as well um, We're going back slowly back to the days of I want to open up both slimes and just go off fusion double fusions during my combo and just go off from there and necro sign you need to have that um, free Lamnia as well to round up the free ofs. These are all the free ofs that you play. Um, I do see some people playing of uh, free of the next card that I'll be showing you, um, but um, I personally think like these are the needed free ofs in the deck. You need to have these cards at maximum consistency and ratios that you can afford to have. Moving on to now the one ofs I play. I play one Thomas. I feel like he's not actually. As important, I rarely do rank eights anymore. I feel like rank eights, as cool as they are, as much as I do love my rank eights, I feel like you don't actually need them. I play one rank eight in the extra deck, and you'll see what it is later on. Um, but other than that, I rarely do it, and I feel like Thomas is just there as that low scale ish that you can use to pendulum some of your level eights to just go off with um, just natural damage with the level eights um and like further link climbs and things like that um i feel like synchros are like the better things in the extra deck and you'll see that later on once i get to the extra deck but for now i'm only just playing the one time just because you see them when you want to you get them when you want to and it just helps you recuperate those monsters in your extra deck those pendulums that you just want to get back and go off with um further summons I'm playing the one off for us, not necessarily for the him being a tuner, but most necessarily for him being a, a low scale pendulum monster that I can put in my pendulum scale. Um, DDD, 
Chaos King Apocalypse is a really strong card in the deck now just thanks to Gilgamesh. This card helps you with so many of your combos and helps you with so many of your um, continue off plays with your Synchro Summons and pen being able to summon himself from the Pendulum Scale is very very powerful um, and just having Gilgamesh put in there straight from the deck um, is very very powerful as well so I really am liking Chaos Apocalypse. He has got a good strong attack and there are times where I do Pendulum summing him in later um, just for the additional damage. The one Vice Typhon, really, really powerful card in the deck. Uh, always do love this card. Like It's just that fourth Necro Summoner is actually really, really handy. And I do love playing the Vice Typhon. The one DD Ghost, uh, really, really <laughs> good. I'm actually been tempted to bump him up to two just because of how good he is. He just, he is such a good consistency card. Just being able to send multiple copies of cards from your deck to the graveyard um, is very, very handy. The level two is actually a lot better now. Um, just because of high fabrex, um, high fabrex, like it's very, very strong. I do love DD goes for that. And being able to just get him banished and recuperate something back from the banished zone is very strong as well. Now, these last two cards are one of them is very situational, depending on the build that you're playing, and one of them is a very special tech choice that I do really like playing, and that my special tech is DD Night Howl. I really like DD Night Howl. Not so much of like the Triple King combo, that's more of a like a budget fun pure build which I will bring to you guys down a later date. But I do like this card for it is literally in the later game a one card Gilgamesh which I feel like the way that I play the deck is that I'll just go generic first turn like just like cross sheep half abrex just get off my negates my lockdowns and i will save gilgamesh for the late game and the mid game the mid and the late game i save gilgamesh for that just because once dd's got everything in its graveyard of his big beers in its graveyard that's where it wants him to be so that in the late game i can grab the night how normal that get something back make the gilgamesh Gilgamesh puts in the scale, Gilgamesh Pendulum summons like a Ragnarok, which then gets something else back, which then just constantly gets you your continuous of summons going off. And Night Howl helps me do that. Very, very good card for doing that. And I really like taking it as just as a one-off. Worst case scenario is just another DD name that you can just fuse with a Swell Sign to make your uh, Genghis. Or it's just a normal summonable tuner to help you go into your half Abrex. Like, is a very night has a very versatile card i feel like if it didn't have the fiend lockdown on it it'd be so much better it'd be played a hundred percent like two hours three hours me every build like but it's not as a brick as you may think it is like i know some of you guys are going to think down there night has a brick it's not really a brick i really have a brick with this card it's a very good card very versatile the fan is a dd name just helps you go off with your standard combos but as I said, in the late game, you can normal this, get Garak of DD, and go into a Gilgamesh. Very, very good card. I just really wanted to explain why I play Night Howl. It's because I know it's going to be that card that people are going to look at. like, huh? You're playing that? That card's crap. <laughs> no, it's not, guys. Trust me. Try it out. It's very, very good. you just got to have the right mentality for it. It, it has that. It has that. This is that card that has the men, a certain mentality on how to play a certain way of how to play it. Once you get that down, once you play test like that, the deck just flows nicely, night how just flows nicely in it. The last card I'm playing is the Buster Dragon. Well, you play this because of the Union Hanger play. Um, I've shown you some combos on that before um, on the channel, so check those out. Um, so many ways to pull off that combo, so many ways to extend that combo. Uh, Buster Welp is that card that you use to lock out your opponent's extra deck. Um, it was great now because of things like Union Hanger. I'll, get, I'll explain it later on, but more in depth. But by having this in the deck and Union Harry in your extra deck, nearly every hand, at the very least, is a negate an extra lock, which is very, very powerful. Um, sometimes it's even at the very least an extra deck lock and if you can just pull that off you're in a good scenario you're in a good spot you can still go into your extra deck your opponent has to then beat over your stuff um, to just beat over the card equipped with buster well to just even play 
and Didi can just do this very very well, very very consistently uh, I love it so much for that so you play the buster up, there's been a lot of times I open it you can luckily equip from hand with the union carrier but there are times where I just like normal summon this and I just get like OTK boards on like going second, I open up with this, I get in the gate in, I get a pop and I'm just like okay cool keep going keep going normal this, make high power wrecks go off go off go off end up on like a savage high wave king high flame king and just like swinging for game like it's just and now I opened up with this and normal summon it <laughs> just make the high power wrecks there are times when you do that and it just helps you off with your play so you really have bricks in this deck which is very very nice I love it there's so few bricks that I just get like the cards that would be considered bricks for other decks, I'm just like, yeah, cool, I don't mind opening up with it. I'll just use it this way and just go off. Moving on to spells is obviously the free gates in the, on Swamp King. For your contracts, three, Allure of Darkness. Uh, two, Where Off Thou. One, Foolish Barrel, and one, One for One. These are all your consistency cards. As you can see, I'm not playing Desires. I'm trying something else out instead of Desires. Um, I just felt like the deck's consistent enough without it. It's very, very bizarre. Um, there's been very, very times where I don't have enough monsters to go up with my players. There's very few enough times where I, I don't have the way to search out what I need at the time, or even if I just open it naturally. So I feel like I just did not need a desire. A lot of times I'd banish too much, and I feel like I need everything in the deck now. It's gotten to that point where I feel like I just need everything to play. Um, so I don't want to risk the banish and just get rid of the things that I don't want to have. Um, so I'm trying to deck out without desires and you'll see what I'm playing instead. It's a very, very weird tech to us, but it would need a big explanation as well after it. So this video is going to be long, so I do apologize for that. Uh, too cool by grave. Three was, <laughs> three was way too much. <laughs> I kept bricking. This is really the only brick in my deck. I hate opening with cool by the graves and multiples. So I've dropped it down to two and I have not regretted it since. Um, I feel like two is a really good number at the moment. Uh, hand traps aren't being used as much and hand traps aren't as great as they used to be. Um, just because a lot of decks, a lot of the top decks at the moment, a lot of top decks in the future coming up can play through hand traps they can play through that hand trap like that ash like that ogre like all these kind of things like unless it's like a specific hand trap for a specific deck like drawn a lot both for spiral dd crow for spiral and shadow and things like that unless it's those very specific hand traps in those very specific moments hand traps aren't that great at the moment it's very very bizarre um, I kind of like that, <laughs> just because I hate being hand trapped. <laughs> but um, and I felt like dropping the call by the grave to two. Um, not only is in situation with that the fact that hand traps aren't going around at the moment, especially in the main deck. Um, it just means that I'm seeing it when I need to, and I'm opening it when I need to. It's a very weird scenario. Dropping it down to two has been very very good. I actually really am enjoying it at two. Um, it may bump up to three later down the line, especially once we start getting back into the uh, full competitive IRC, the um, MR5 in play and that kind of thing, people knowing what decks are on the top at the moment, who knows hand traps might be popular again, and if it hurts the stack a lot, then yeah, cool Bygrave may be bumped back up to three. But um, at the moment, it's current time, I'm really enjoying it too, I'm not bricking with it as much, I'm opening like the one of, which is very, very nice. Um, so yeah, I'm very, very happy with it at two. But the main spicy, I want to say spicy, but the main thing I'm testing over at the moment is main deck two copies of Dark Ruler No More. You're going to find it weird when I say this is a go first deck. <laughs> so why are you playing Dark Ruler No More, Joe? Like, the thing is, this is what's replaced um, Pot of Desires in the sense that I want to be as versatile as possible. I try to make this deck as versatile as possible where it has a main turn that it wants to go. It wants to go first, it wants to build up the gates and locks and just have your opponent deal with that game one, win game one, side game two, win game two. Hopefully, um, if all goes well. But I don't want to be in those situations where um, at the moment, with looking at the top decks at the moment, I don't want to be 
in those scenarios where if I don't win the die roll, I'm forced to go second, and I'm going to struggle to break down boards. Who can break down boards, don't get me wrong, but if they have multiple, multiple negates, like upper low sir, because it's a very monster effect heavy deck, um, you're going to struggle getting through those boards, unless you can pull off a, uh, a Kaliuga um, without using important monster effects, you're going to struggle. So I'm maining the Dark Ruler no more for those die rolls. If I do lose the die rolls, Dark Ruler no more, if I open with it, great. I can negate your effects, go off with my own, punch through your boards, and just break your board piece by piece with giant massive monsters, and then come your turn, you now have to get through my negates that punch through your negates. It's, gonna, it's that mentality which I'm trying out the Dark Ruler no more in the main deck, there's two of them. In those scenarios in games two, I can always just side them out, it's a very good sign out card. Um, that I can just take out my deck and then just put in like specific cards to break through my opponent's deck. So I'm trying it out, it's been going very well at the moment. Um, it just means it, it makes your deck safe. It's a very good safety net card. I'm really enjoying it. That's it for the main deck. Moving on to the X ray, it's the two regular Gengars and one high Gengars. I feel like you don't need the arc anymore in this kind of deck, in this kind of build the more, what I want to call, quote unquote, the more competitive build. Um, this is my competitive build, if you want to know. Um, so, I feel like the arc and things like that aren't very important, aren't very needed. Um, you can play them if you feel comfortable playing them. The level 7 the arc is very handy, just being 2 DDs as well, and 2800 tag is not something to laugh at. Um, so if you feel comfortable playing it, go for it. You can take one of the extra cards out here in the deck. If you're not playing like the Buster Bolt, you can easily swap out Union Care for like a D-Arc or like a Purplish Armageddon, things like that. Those are the other two fusions I'd be playing if I had the extra space. Uh, moving on to the Synchros, which is like the biggest part of the extra deck is one Formula Sync, one, one Gusty King Alexander, one Siegfried, one Savage, one Crystal Ring, and one High Gus King Alexander. Uh, these cards are perfect. I haven't needed anything else. Like, the only other card that I'd put in this actually is the Odd Eyes Absolute. Uh, purely on those times where you want to pull off a, a Ragnarok scale effect and then summon it through the Absolute. That's the only other thing I want to put in this extra deck. Other than that, I'm very comfortable with this extra deck. Um, with these Synchro lineups. The Synchro lineup has been very, very well for me. I use everything in this Synchro lineup. Um, certain combos require certain things. Other combos require others. Everything else in those combos, if I'm doing a different one, it's just used as further extenders or um, turn two, where you just want to go off for game. Things like High Gus King Alexander is, is used in one of the combos um, for the lock combos, but is also just used for everything else as a, just a generic giant beat stick going to turn two and three that I can just swing for game while also using it to as an extent because it has a special summon effect as well. So I really am enjoying this extra lineup. The only very thing I summon is Crystal Ring. Uh, a lot of times Savage Dragon is just a lot better, but there are times when you do summon Crystal Ring, so I like to keep it in the extra deck. Moving on to the XZs, you're only playing two of them, which is the High Wave King Caesar and the one DDD uh, Gilgamet, um, Kaliuga. I don't play Titanic Galaxy. I don't even miss Titanic Galaxy. It's very, very weird. It's very, very funny. Um, I just never seem the need to summon it. I feel like Synchros are just a lot easier to summon. Your tuner. Um, you use your tuners a lot more consistently now, a lot more easier than pumping out two level eights. You can do that. The, the old combos are still in there, old MR3 combos. So if you just want to play that, go for it. I'd probably take out one of the links for it, for the Titanic. Um, otherwise, I just feel like these two are just a lot better. This is two summon negates, and this is just like, okay, I'm just going to nuke your board and negate your board and just punch through it. Um... So, and it also helps with the back row decks as well. But, um, yeah, I just feel like I don't miss Titanic Galaxy as much as anymore. Um, who knows, it might go back in there, I don't know. Uh, moving on to the Lynx, though. We play four of them because Link 2s are now the best Link number to play. 
So we have Gilgamesh. Finally, this card looks gorgeous as ultra rare. Thank you, Konami. Uh, Union Carrier, Heart of Fabrex, and Cross Sheep. These cards, you use all of them. Uh, in your standard combos, you'll always use going first. First turn plays is always these two. Usually, this one first and going to this. Sometimes this to then go into this. Union Carry, if you have the Union Carry play, you play Union Carry for that. Very, very easy to pull off. As I said, there are combos on the channel for you to go have a look at and play test around. Um, Union Carry is very, very good for that. But also, you <laughs> carry this is so abusive of Lamia, it's insane. Um, you can do things like turn two, Union Carrier, equip like a Necro Slime or, Lam uh, or a Vice Typhon to a monster, then use Lamia's effect in Grave to send that equipped monster to Grave to get herself back. Like, it's just insane. The combos, that small little combos you can do with that is absolutely really, really good. And as I said, Gilgamesh, you use it for your continue up plays and just punch him for OTK damage there. So that's him for that. But guys, that's it for the profile. I hope you all enjoyed it. I do apologize. This is a very long video coming up to 21 minutes now. Um, but uh, it's just I had to explain a lot of this deck. This deck has changed so much and there's a lot to explain a lot to play test and it's very very powerful and very very fun um i hope that this becomes meta again in the sense that it didn't have its time to shine beforehand but um at the same time i don't want things to get banned um and limited and that so then we'll have to wait and see but i'm going to play this constantly it's going to be my deck to play again um so expect a lot of updates on this deck again on the channel like we used to before um so as always guys like comment and subscribe to the channel until next time guys as always happy dueling